After nearly three decades of representing North Carolina in the U.S. Capitol, Senator Richard Burr, he's now saying goodbye. He made a speech on the Senate floor today ahead of his retirement. I cannot express how much appreciation for the love and the support of my family to let me have this incredible experience. Brooke and I have lived apart for 28 years. Outside of the congressional recesses or a few trips every Monday, I've had to wake up just like you and know I had to fly back to Washington to cast a vote. I look forward to being home with the love of my life when I'm done with this. I also want to thank the people of North Carolina for honoring me with the trust and respect. I've humbled, I'm humbled that they sent me here to Congress eight different times, and I appreciate their support. All right, so let's dig into Burr's career representing the state of North Carolina. He was first elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1994. He served five terms in the House and is currently serving his third and final term in the U.S. Senate. Now, during his time in the House, his office says that he led legislation modernizing the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, began work to improve our nation's biodefense pandemic preparedness capabilities as well. In the Senate, Burr led a number of significant legislative priorities, including the creation of today's pandemic response framework. That was through the passage and reauthorization of the Pandemic and All Hazards Preparedness Act, improving the FDA's ability to regulate cutting-edge treatments for patients, and consistently championing funding for medical innovation and research. But Senator Burr's time in office, it was not without some negative headlines. As the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Burr spearheaded a three-year investigation into whether former President Donald Trump's campaign coordinated with Russia during the 2016 presidential election. Burr had said several times that he saw no evidence of such collusion, but the senator still came under fire from pro-Trump Republicans for his involvement in the investigation. Burr stepped aside from his chairman role after federal agents began investigating his stock sales. That investigation goes back to January 2020. That's when Burr and other senators began to get regular briefings on coronavirus cases in China. At the time, Fauci told reporters about coronavirus, I don't think this is something the United States public should be worried or frightened about, but they should know that we are taking this obviously very seriously as it evolves. Then in mid-February, Records show Burr sold up to $1.7 million worth of stock. By that time, the public knew about the coronavirus threat, but several days before the sale, Burr wrote an op-ed assuring Americans the U.S. was prepared. Days later, he gave a speech saying the virus could have major consequences. A law called the Stock Act prohibits members of Congress from using non-public information they obtain from their official positions for personal benefit. Burr offered a window into how he decided to sell off the stocks, saying he relied solely on information available to the public when making his financial decision. Burr says the investigation was closed without charges last year. In February 2021, Senator Burr voted against his party to impeach former President Donald Trump. Mr. Burr. Mr. Burr, guilty. In a statement after the vote, Burr said in part, I do not make this decision lightly, but I believe it is necessary. By what he did and by what he did not do, President Trump violated his oath of office to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. The final vote, 57 to 43, found Trump not guilty, but Burr's decision was renounced by North Carolina Republicans. I like Senator Burr, I'm friendly with Senator Burr, but this was an error and the Republican Party is correct in my judgment to express that view. The North Carolina GOP voted to censure Burr two days after the impeachment vote. But through it all, Burr was able to win the vote of the North Carolina people several times, something North Carolina senators before him had struggled to do. He was certainly a first-class uh, vote-getter in North Carolina. Part of his legacy will be the fact that uh, he was re-elected to the Senate um, for the first time after a period in which North Carolina sort of was running through senators <laughs> for uh, various reasons, either due to retirement or incumbents losing after just one term. And so uh, Senator Burr became the first senator to win a second term in North Carolina. And of course, he went on to win a third term. 
So the question is, what's next for Burr? Well, he hasn't said, so we're just going to kind of have to see and wait and what happens when his term ends in January. As for his empty seat, North Carolina voters decided it would go to Republican Ted Budd. He'll take office January 3rd.